and we're back with some more death mark and uh, I forgot to mention this in the previous video it's supposed to be like a walkthrough so it's just gonna be like guiding you how to play this game there you go yep and let's just get back in it the last time we left off um, we just met our new characters Sakasa and Moe and we'll just have Mary explain or recap what happened. We gotta head to H Elementary and investigate Hanahiko. You can pick whoever you wanna bring with us, Moe or Sakasa. Not sure when Chris uh yeah. Do not waste time dwaddling. It's possible necessary content may hasten the effects of the mark, only get an absolute necessary. Minimum, yeah. <clears throat> All right. So, um, let's bring Mo with me. Yes. And now we dip. First, we have to get to H Elementary. Mary says we're free to use the car in the garage. Always nice. The garage is attached from the mansion. The vintage model van and bicycle only accent the elegant interior. Thank God for careless people. The car key was left on the table. It'd be like that, you know? Time to go. Hey, according to Mary, you lost a bunch of memories, right? Is it really okay for you to drive? So she looks at me suspiciously. I mean, she has a point, you know? <laughs> Don't worry, it'll, it'll be fine, I think. Mm. It'll all come back to me when I take the wheel. Part of that is to convince myself. But aren't you missing your license? If a cop finds us, we'll have more to worry about than Han Hiko. She's right about that. But our lives are on the line, so we don't have much of a choice. Once the mark's gone, I'll remember. Then I'll just have and then I'll just have him reissue it. Assuming I ever got one. Now I'm even more worried. Just drive safe, alright? I mean, she has a point with us losing our memories and uh, potentially not being able to drive. But I mean, driving is easy. Technically. Uh, human bodies are remarkable. Back in the garage, I wasn't sure if I'd be able to drive or not. But the second my hand touches the wheel, I wasn't worried anymore. My muscles erected quicker than I expected, and it's now easy to guide this monster down the road. I wouldn't call it a monster considering we're literally in like a van, but now, thoughts of what I can no longer do start to filter in my head. Hey mister, well, what pipes up hesit hesitantly, probably let the silence go on too long. It doesn't seem as cheerful as she was a little while ago. What's it like to lose your memories? Hmm. Thinking emoji? What would you mean? What, what do you mean? Like, do we all go at once? Or a few pieces at a time? What if you're only left with sad memories? I hate that. Damn. I don't think it works like that, but... I have no idea if we're getting worse or better. I don't know what I, what I was like to begin with, so there's nothing to, so there's nothing to compare to. In that sense, rather than memories vanishing, it's like everything being painted in white. That's what it feels like. Oh. You sure are mature, mister. You take everything so calmly. I guess. You know. The conversation dwindles, leaving only the sound of the tires on the road. Then thoughts start popping up start popping into my head again, one after another. I know we have to check out that mirror. But what else should we investigate? What do you think? Mother glances over at me. No idea. I can't even remember my own name. How the hell am I supposed to know what we're, what we're doing? <laughs> Just blank out. Oh, please, I'm really counting on you. Think whatever you want. I'm talking to a child. I need to show restraint and be a good example. But that's definitely how I really feel. I stood on at the steering wheel. The doll in the mansion. Mark bearers. 
the mark spirits and the mysterious deaths I feel like I'm going to be buried under all the crushing thoughts that keep popping into my head what awaits me down what awaits me down this dark road I feel a flutter from the mark on my wrist like it's trying to warn me my brain might, might not be able to understand but my, my body can sense it that death is closing in if that's happening isn't the problem anymore it's more how long do I have left how much longer is it Nani. I almost yell but I managed to swallow it down with effort I think we're almost there really it's closer than I thought yeah yeah that's exactly right at any time it could it's a lot closer than you think <laughs> so we just drove for like five minutes and we're like yeah man we're here about to pull up looming ominously in the moonlight the school definitely looks abandoned for quite a number of years in fact the walls are starting to crack all the windows are broken as well a thick chain is in front of the main gate to keep people from going in. Chotto, chotto. Uh, hey you, none of the stuff. Who the fuck? Oh, it's a cop. The enthusiastic voice comes from a man in a guard uniform. He must be patrolling the area. Looks like we got caught. This property belongs to the city. No one's allowed inside. Did you know? Or are you up to something? A bunch of people have been coming here on dares since, since it's haunted. You aren't one of them, are you? Um, Nani? Well, that's what the rumors are saying anyway. It's a giant pain. Moa nods in agreement. It is pretty famous after all. My guard side. Anyway, the school's off limits, so you can't go inside. I don't want any trouble in my first shift here. Please leave. Hey, Night. I mean, we're gonna go inside e either way, though. We gotta investigate the mirror. Muttering to myself, to himself, the guard makes his way into the school. As you watch him leave, Moe leans over and whispers, "Damn, that wasn't a, there wasn't a guard when I snuck in here before. We better not get caught." All right. Moving around a haunt. Use the directional buttons to move. The map shows which way you're facing and where you can go. Alright, but uh, yeet. Just go inside, casually. <sighs> Pushing open the doors, I head inside. Whoa, it's so dark. We can't see anything like this. The moonlight doesn't reach inside. We'll just have to use a flashlight. But if we use a flashlight, that guard will find us. Can't do anything about it. Can't do anything about it, I guess. Anyway, that mirror is... Hmm. Pretty sure stood right on the staircase. Investiga investigating a haunt. Nice. Uh, move the left stick to search the current area. Shine the flashlight on areas of interest and press the X button. Pressing the circle button ends the search. Using the directional buttons will end the, s the search and move you. Alright. Dink. Flashlight. What is this? The battered shoe rack is covered in dirt. Alright, what is this? The platforms are broken wooden slats for the shoe rack. They creak when we step on them. This is... Do not leave handprints on the mirror in the, e in the eastern staircase. Thank you. Dependent research presentation. First floor of my classroom. Come check it out. Whoa, that presentation takes me back. Anyway, the mirror is on the eastern staircase is the one I saw. I guess we'll go there first. Yeah, it's to the right. Uh, thank you for telling me where to go. To the right. Have a... That sound vibrated in my ear and I'm like, oh god, nanny. As we enter the hallway, a small shadow flits across our feet. I turn the flashlight to find... A rabbit. No, uh, my bad. <clears throat> a bunny. So cute. Was it, was it the school's pet? It's black, so like, and it looks pretty evil, so I don't think it, it would be that. 
The black rabbit squeaks and runs away. It rushes towards the eastern end of school. Wait, did that say of the school or of school? Hold up. Yep, it rushes towards the eastern end of school. <laughs> It'd be like that. It ran away. It's time to follow. Huh, yeah, right. Alright, if with that, the spirit fell. Black rabbit. So, I can't go there yet. This is. Look, 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 look something smashed the fluorescent light. It just had to be on repair. Nothing out there. Move forward. Gotta move. Gonna go to the stairs. And, uh. Potentially be possessed by some demon. Shit. Some spirit. It's a mirror. We made it. This is it. It's the mirror I saw last time. I'm sure of it. Huh. Just then, a dull pain runs through my wrist. Like something is biting into my skin. To distract myself from the pain, I keep talking with Moe. I cer it certainly looks normal. Yeah, what should we do? Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to look into the mirror. I silently face the mirror, bringing my face up to it to peer into its cloudy surface. As I expected, I can't make anything out. All I see is my own shadow reflected as a vague, shadowy lump. My shadow sways in the mirror. At least, that's what I thought at first. I figured the shadow moved because I had. But the next time the shadow moves, a cold shiver runs down my spine. That's not my shadow. But something is in the mirror. No oh god. It's a boy. None? Moe yelps and steps back. Well, that confirms I'm not hallucinating. There really is something in there. Every muscle on my body locks. I try to look away, but I can't even close my eyes. The figure's mouth twists. I don't want to look, but I can't even close my eyes. It opens its mouth. An odd voice pierces my ears. Uh, deadly choice. Alright, I got this. I got my notes right in front of me. Hey, am I pretty? I'm gonna say no. You miss me with that. Hmm. If only I, ha I had that red stuff. Hmm. I can't see well. Are you a grown up? My good sir, I'll have you know I'm the tallest in my class. Graduated top of the top of the military academy. Did not. And big people aren't allowed in school. No. Suddenly the mirror cracks. It's loud noises, bro. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it cracked. Now, I can't see. No more big people here. Is that? Oh. The figure, the figure disappears. We lived. Yaw yeet. Fuck was that? A scream echoes from the other side of the school. Moe sinks into the floor. They gasp in panic disbelief for a while. I feel much the same. What was that? That was probably... Hanahiko. I couldn't say it. The word sticks in my throat. My mouth is completely dry. And I'm not gonna lie, but mine's just too. <clears throat> I can't believe this. I thought I wanted to, I thought I wanted to see a ghost. But to see one that clearly. Moe seems to shake the encounter off and return to normal. Hanhiko's words swirl around in my head. Our situation has done a complete reverse from where we were meant from where we were just moments ago. I can't believe I was complaining about not knowing what to investigate. Oh, uh anyway. That scream. Was that the guard we met outside? I doubt there's anyone else here. He might have seen something wherever he is, too. It sounded like it came from far away, away is down the hallway. 
that would be the other side of the school. Yeah, let's go look for him. But if he screamed like that, something might have happened to him. Right as I respond, I hear someone whisper in my ear. Purify with red. <clears throat> I look into the direction of the voice, but all I see is darkness. Mister? No, it, it's nothing. Let's go. If I was at his profile, Hanehiko, boy in the mirror. Alright, uh, gotta go. There you go, down the stairs. And down the hallway. Yep, but. Oh my god, that's so. Hold up, that's so loud. Alright, we're fine. Um, a bird cries and breaks the silence. I guess there's a crow or something outside. Do I want to look? <laughs> Fuck was that? Uh, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, right. So we gotta go forward. Current light entrance. Gotta keep going forward and uh, meet up with the guard. Forward, just walking on the hallways. I heard a noise like something slamming against the door. Is someone inside? I shine the flashlight at, at the door. Oh my god. Out of nowhere, the door bursts open and something comes flying out. Uh, he more shrieks and falls down. I recognize his clothes. What kind of plant covers half my face? Hey. Part of the space we can see is twisted in anguish as he screams. No doubt about it, it's that guard. What the hell happened? Thorns are eating my face. It hurts. What's going on? Oh. Mullen sits on the floor, stunned into just syllables. The guard suddenly rushes towards the entrance, and then si silence falls once more. Pant. The only sound left is that of our shaky breathing. Once we catch our breaths, I take Moe's hand and help them up. Our nerves have calmed some, but that definitely left an unsettling impression. Something terrible lurks here. We can't just sit around. I felt like I was paralyzed. Okay now. But mister, that guy. Always stares at the door. I wonder if Hanehiko did that. And, and I don't know if you noticed, but I got the feeling someone was standing behind him. There's really no good way to respond to that. I let silence serve as my answer. What else could I do? No point in coming here if we're just gonna stand here shaking. If we don't uncover the secret before it comes for us, why don't we check out the staff room? I tactfully avoid answering Moe's question. The guard had run out of here. Something might have been inside. Some secret about Hanahiko. Y yeah, you're right. Let's just be careful, right? I covered my wrist with my palm. Making sure Moe doesn't notice. The moment I put my hand on the knob, the mark burned my skin, pulsing along with my beating heart. The info was at a spirit file. Plant the fight guard. Ugh, my chair. Chair noises. The staff room is, is chaos. The furniture is upended and the walls are... Was there a fire here or something? There are black scorch marks everywhere. Whew. Momo looks more relieved as they come out from behind me. 
Mo, it's totally empty. Anyway, let's look around. Okay, uh, there's a door over there too. It looks like it goes to another room. Yeah, but first let me, um, yeah, let me pick that up real quick. One a talisman. When I pick up one talisman, I feel a warmth flow through me. Got full power. One talisman comes silently in my hand. Find that one on talisman to restore your soul power. The more soul power you have, the easier it will be to survive a daily choice. I mean, getting like a one on talisman is the equivalent of like drinking coffee. You just feel better. The one other one was burnt. It must have been a fire a long time ago. All right. Let's go to the door. Mm -hmm. It's kind of cramped in here. Is this, is, this, is this a storage room? Seems to be. Hopefully there's something useful in here. Oh, but there is. Uh, I gotta, gotta touch that. Eep. Reaching up, I grab the box and look inside. Got lipstick, red pen, and girl slippers. Good job, mister. I knew there was a reason you were tall. She just roast me right, right here now. Um, nothing in there. Uh, there's a red pen on this. I take out the red pen, but what do I do with it? I don't have any particularly good ideas. Oh. I'm pulling the door, but it just rattles in place. It looks like it won't open. Something's stopping it. Not, not, fuck. Uh, no, 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 not the letter opener. Uh, the red pen. Take out the red pen. What? Oh wait, no, I have to, to look at it. Looks like the sliding door has a simple lock. Just taking something inside in the hole for the screw. But the key itself seems to have gone missing. I don't see it anywhere. What's this? Something's stuck in the hole for the screw. It seems that the wooden thing works as a lock. I'll have to do something about that to open the door. Uh, now, oh my god, now we can use the red pen. The red pen. This pen will be able to pop up and whatever stuck inside the hole. Oh, you got skills. Bruh, is it really that surprising? Anyway, I need to focus. Nani. Suddenly, the resistance vanishes and the pen pokes all the way through. I put my hand on the door and slide it open without any issues. There's a red tube inside. I got flare. A flare? What's that for? It's a signal light for emergencies. It's a good idea to ha always have one in the car. Alright. But... I'm gonna pick something up off the floor. The thorn about as long, about as long as my pinky finger. That that's what what was that's what was in the hole. God, I I I really gotta get some water or something. My throat is dry as fuck. So this is not a coincidence. I bet he didn't want anyone to have that. So he put a thorn in the hole. Is he scared of this? They both look at the flare again. Ah uh, hell no. Uh. Do we have a drink in here somewhere? I do. Hold up. I gotta get some some juice. My throat my throat has been really dry. <clears throat> All right. Anyway, <clears throat> huh? Why did you turn off the light? That wasn't me. I didn't turn it off. It just went off. What, what was that noise? Hey, Mister. What was that noise? Be quiet. It's a struggle to not yell with my nerves on edge. I hit the flashlight again and again. Come on, please. The batteries are just working. I feel like I'm performing CPR on this thing. Finally. Hey. Got it. Fuck. Jeez. The door behind me warps threateningly. My mark burns in pain. Death is already in the room next door. There's no time and nowhere to run. Calm down. I need to find a way out of this quickly. We're running out of time. A way to survive. You've got to hurry. So, so you're gonna look at the trap door. Look at it real quick. Door. Feel it. Door. You can grasp on it. Pull it. But unsuccessful. It's, it's no use. Hurry up. So now, 
the letter opener and use it on the trap door. But you have to seal the door before you're able to actually use it. When I touch the metal, my metal, my mark scorches me. I stop moving for just a second. But I have to do this. Yes, I got it. I grab the handle and lift up the trap door. As I thought, a dark hole leads me down under the floor. Get in! I shove Moa into the hole. Then, I slide down into the darkness after them. I'd like to be land on. Ugh. I fall unexpectedly far, hitting my back against something. I grip my teeth to stop myself from yelling. What the fuck is that? Something shuffling above my head. If we had to stay there just, just a few more seconds. I grip my burning wrist with, with all my might. I must endure I must endure the pain for now. What's the sound? I can I can hear anxious panting. But Moe must must be right next to me. They're shaking so hard I can see it from the corner of my eye. Fuck. I brace myself, expecting the trap door to break open any second. But the shuffling noise finally grows distant. Is it okay now? Yeah, I think it's gone. But suddenly, my wrist isn't hurting anymore. Thank god, I thought we were done for this time. Anyway, where are we? What in the world is this room? I'm surprised, I'm surprised this place exists beneath the school. Can you turn on light? Um, sure. I cautiously press the switch, being careful not to make any noise. Yeet. What the fuck? The scene captured in the light of the flashing... Uh, the scene captured in the light of the flashlight sends shivers down my spine. What? Moe slaps a hand over, over their mouth. For a few moments, all we can do is stare in silence. The disturbing scene, more horrible than anything I've seen before, spreads out before us. Anyone would be shocked by it, especially a kid. I take a deep breath and look closer. There's something twisting around the corpses. It looks like some kind of plant vine. Are those roses? The strangely sharp thorns and the thin red petals. There appears to be real live roses covering their corpses and carpeting, carpeting the floor. My vision suddenly grows dim. Ah, oh, hell no. I see a woman's body trapped by roses. Why? What? What is this? The tragedy that happened in this room is as if it's all playing out in my head. I can see it. Roses? What are they doing here? Did someone plant them? Moe's voice brings me back to reality. Yeah. I can't tell them that uh, I can't tell them that I saw some waking dream. I scrambled to remember the conversation. That's right. I saw the rose vines, then... Yeah, it's gotta be it. It's not like they'd just bring up on their own. But... Why would anyone do that? Did someone decorate the corpses for some kind of reason? Or did they, or did they all die captured by the roses, like I saw in that vision? Eek. Eck. Always screams. What's wrong? Something moved. See over there. Back in there. No. Is something hiding in there? Here. Uh I mean you can investigate the skeletons, but they'd all be like the same thing. So no position. But I don't find anything. Alright. How about you? Now I want to do uh so it's just just my position. Corpse not word. Let's see. 
uh, around Hanmir. Do we need this? And uh, mm, kind of. What's it a gift from wait for a young woman? A mirror? I guess someone was here after all. But more important, actually, no, let me investigate the rest of the others. Nothing in there. All right. Do you have anything? Nope. Uh, do you have anything? Nope. All right. Anyway, time to investigate the bed. Eat. The mattress is oozing dark. It's oozing dark, dirty water. It smells like sewage. I slide the mattress over and find a plastic sheet underneath it. A vinyl sheet. Okay, so we have one thing now. Two things. It's pretty thick. W w w was it put there to protect from water damage? The top of the sheet is pitch black. At first glance, it looks like it's covered in mold. But when I spread it open, it crunches as a dark as it crunches as dark red flakes fall from it. This is blood. Nani. I can't do anything but whispered, dumbfounded as I stare at the blood stained sheet. Something murmurs in my ear as if in reply. Their blood denies him. Part of me makes the voice part of part of me takes the voice seriously. I'm clearly hallucinating, but for some reason it calms me down. I'm still in a daze. I shine the flashlight under the bed. There it is again. Something there. Moe's voice has gone very shrill. Then Hey now, give me a break. I'm no monster, you know. I'm just a regular human being. Is that Captain Levi? Something slowly something slowly climbs out from under the bed. It is a man in a trench coat. A person? What are you doing? Uh, my voice is dry. What are you doing under there? The man looks bored. He scoffs. Same as you. I ran, I ran into that monster and escaped down here. Then you guys came. If this man came here, how was it locked on the outside? The man turns his back to us and jerks his chin. Anyway, I was hiding over there. His answer is believable enough. Why is he here at school to begin with? His presence, his presence raises a lot of questions. The man tilts his head a bit and peers at me. Then he snorts. It seems he's seen through me. You don't look like you believe me. Yes, yes, that's only natural. I haven't told you everything either. I could, but... The man looks around at, it, at his feet. We better get out of here first. We shouldn't, we shouldn't chat at the crime scene. I think you're right. Boa seems to feel the same way. Let's head back for now. You have somewhere to go back to? Good. So let's get going. The man puts his hand on the ladder. He pauses and, and turns to us. The name's, uh, the name's Satoru Mashida. I'm an ex-detective. Forgot to mention that. The man named Mashida disappears up the, up the ladder. We follow him back up to the first floor. Well, but when we emerge, he's not there. Hey, take a look at this. Marsha has climbed to us from down the hallway. Was it like this when you guys came through? Moa pipes up, voice slightly wobbly. No, it wasn't. It wasn't like this at all. No. Huh. This actually looks pretty nice. Low key. Something's creeping along the hallway. They're rose vines. Thought so. I didn't see them before either. The mark's color grows more vivid. Early dawn. A few hours left until death closes in.
Some people now should put others on guard, even if there's no particular ill will between them. That's exactly the type of person Mashira is. Oh, we've got some nice stuff here. The moment he climbs into the car, he makes a grab for my bag. Then he starts inspecting all my stuff. I wasn't planning on keeping a constant eye on him, but he's making it very hard not to. Momo seems like the type to stick her nose in everything, but she's suspiciously silent, as if exhausted. Hmm? Are you okay, Moe? Huh? Oh, yeah, just zoning out. You know, I'm fine. She doesn't look fine, but my other passenger is more of a concern right now. So, were you at the school because you were investigating something? I'm not in the force anymore, just poking around for my own reasons. Something I wanted to check. I don't doubt what he says, but that would mean he entered the school illegally. What were you? Let me ask one thing first. I should interrupt my question and points to my arm. Does that hurt? It didn't take him long to spot the mark on my wrist. Sometimes it hurts the most whenever I'm in danger. Huh, is that so? Uh, a throat. Masha leans back in his chair, satisfied. Let me get my cup of water real quick. <sighs> water. Yeah. I was investigating some missing some missing people. I guess he's responding to my question now. That school came up in a number of missing persons cases. Each one had some affiliation with H Elementary before they disappeared. Teachers, workers, people in the PTA, students, and their family members. I was looking for them. But then I'm always speaking up in the from the backseat. Were those people, the corpses down there? She doesn't sound as energetic as she usually does. Something happened after all. Is her mark? Masha doesn't reply. Maybe he, maybe he thinks the answer is obvious, or maybe replying to a kid is worth his time. It only bugs me about what he just said. If the school was clearly suspicious, then of course I brought it up to my superiors. All I got for it was... He continues before I can ask, making a slashing motion across his neck. <sighs> you got fired, huh? Dis disciplinary discharge. Something about sexually harassing a, sub a subordinate. That principal's gotta have some kind of political pull. I probably dug up something he didn't want getting out. That wasn't my plan. I never meant to uncover anything dirty. True, the school did have that suspicious room. It's not that strange to think it, it would come up in some missing persons cases. That would be common sense at least. At least. But common sense is the world is for the world of the living. Spirit. Might have done something to do with those cases. Hmm. There's an awkward silence. In that case, this isn't even a case anymore, is it? Masha just sighs deeply. Who would believe it? Who would believe that there there's a monster in the school killing people? It's personal now. Our problem. And we're on our own. He turns his wrist over and shows it to me. On his skin is a familiar mark. You too? Yeah, I sensed it as soon as I saw yours. I had a feeling this would be a problem. We're in the same boat, you and I. He has, he has good instincts. We should talk more when we get back. I could have mentioned there's some... I stopped myself from, from finishing my sentence. I shouldn't mention that for now. In any case, once we get back, we'll give you more details. Yeah, I'm sure that'll help him a bunch. Hmm. But Masha scoffs. Help, huh? You're underestimating me. We're about to pull up back at the mansion.
When I get out of the car, someone's there to greet me. It's a casa. Welcome back, mister. You too, Miss Moe. I'm, gl I'm glad you're unharmed. Did you find any clues about the spirit? What? So there are others? There's everybody. Huh. What a reliable group you got. The sarcasm is practically dripping off his words. So, are we all planning on continuing the search for that key or whatever it is? We don't have anything else to go on. There's no other choice. I don't understand you. If the source of the mark is a spirit, it would be best to destroy the source, don't you think? What do you mean? The spirit exists, so all I have to do is kill it. Are you serious? Of course he's serious. He, does, he, doesn't, he doesn't exactly look like the joking type. Even if we manage to kill it, will that really make the mark disappear? When I consider everything Marius told me, it doesn't seem like it'll work that way. Even assuming it did, we have a, a more fun, fundamental problem. And how do you plan to kill it? I'll figure something out. If something exists, there's logically a way to destroy it as well. He claims he can kill a spirit, yet doesn't know yet doesn't even know how, how he'll do it. Where does where does all that confidence come from? Don't forget, I have faced him once already. If we're seriously thinking of killing him, my shooter grasps his wrist. The little shit shot some kind of thorns at me from a distance. The hit hard enough to stick in concrete. There's no way to get in close to him. We we'll have to make him we we'll have, we'll have to make that a priority. Why should have pulled something out of out of the heel of his shoe and tosses it at me? It's a thorn. It's a thorn, curved like a fang. The only reason I'm still breathing is because I was lucky. It won't happen next time. We need a plan. All right. <clears throat> uh, uh. As we head to the entrance, I tell Mashita about Kudo Mansion. He takes it all in silently. Even bringing out the talking doll or Sayakujo's death that doesn't trigger a reaction. Is he so unnervingly calm because he's already dealt with supernatural? Maybe. Most low key way. I reach the main hall, which is warmly lit. This is a strange mansion, but for some reason, I feel like I've come home. I. in my throat. I. I this climatization is kind of terrifying. A symbolization. Welcome back, Lord Yashiki. That man is a Mark Bear too, I see. Would you make the introductions? Yeah, I gotcha. I update Mary on our, on our investigation and the strange way we, we met Masha. The mirror on the ground room full of corpses and some appearance of roses. I really hate to admit it, but it's clear something supernatural is at work here. And the spirit that caused all of it, Hanahiko. There's no doubt that Han Hiko is the one who put the mark on Masha on too. But eh, his face. His face. But what kind of chance do we have against a monster that can do that? Masha says we should kill him. But is that even possible? Hey Yashki. What up, Levi? My train of thought my train of thought is interrupted. Masha's holding a leather-bound notebook out towards me. Read this. I picked it up in the underground room. It was caught up in a bunch of those rose vines when I found it. It was pretty hard to get loose. Did you read it? I skimmed through it a bit. It's got some interesting stuff. That's what he says, but he's not smiling at all. His eyes simmer with a quiet anger. Dark red marks stain the cover. I have a bad feeling, but I flipped through it. Rose petals fall as they become unstuck in the pages. <clears throat> Notes within are very detailed. The author was intelligent and well written. Reading through it dawns on me that this was written by H. Elementary's principal. The author meticulous letters on each page tell a ghastly story. Records of a young adopted boy's tutoring session sessions. The first note was from five years ago. It seems the boy adopted by the principal was small and exceedingly cute. He enjoyed wearing skirts and makeup too. There was no denying that, he, that, the, that the truly suited a dainty red cheeked boy like him. But the principal had a hard time accepting such fancies. 
bad habits must have connected Young to promote sound, me sound mental health, he thought. So he called it a tutoring as a cover for his warped desires. <sighs> it took place in the underground room. Too many prying eyes for anywhere else. There was no safer place in the school at night once all teachers had left. The principal stayed behind under, under the pretense of keeping watch, then tutored. He was a highly respected teacher. He'd even make appearances on TV. There was no reason to be suspicious. The only one who noticed anything strange was the boy's hormone teacher. Uh, wait, what did I say? Uh, boy's hormone teacher, first bunch of powers, and how shot. Alright. As the notes continue, they are more and more deranged. They paint a horrible picture. It is as of a totally distorted parent and child. My child gets weaker after every session. His delicate frame has grown thinner and his red cheeks are now darkened. His appearance is described in detail. But there is no malice or hatred. There is just fanatical sincerity. His pride as an educator. And a terrifying, terrifying smothering love. It continues like that to the very last page. There is no mention of what became of the principal and the boy. But going by the current state of H Elementary, I, c I can hazard a guess. You don't look so well, mister. What was in that notebook? To cause appears in me, he and the boy in the notebook are about the same age. This isn't stuff you share with a little kid. I, I better just sum up the main points for him. It's terrible. We children are always the victims of the egos of adults. Separate grown ups are irredeemable. You good, bro? You good? Why do you. Like, why he say that makes sense? The revolting evil of the adults and the poor boy who became a victim. But is that really the end? If Hanahiko and the boy in the notebook are connected, and the boy turned into a monster, is that even possible? Uh, untimely death reduced hatred. Death does not bring it to an end. Such festering sentiments can give birth to the supernatural. Monsters, ghosts, vengeful spirits, they have many names. I believe that you have all heard one or two of such stories. Hanahiko is similar. Mary's words are hard to swallow. After all those weird events, it only makes sense to accept them. If I turn my back on the truth, all that will await me is death. Then Hanahiko really is a monster. You must form a plan based on the hypothesis. Mary is silent for a moment. Then her jade glass eyes shift to Mashida. Uh, incidentally, according to Lord, incidentally, according to Lord Yashida's report, there are those among you who are considering killing the spirit. I shall warn you just in case, but that will be very difficult to do. Why is that? Ugh. Like you see, Masha does not narrow his eyes, but I made sure to speak up first. They are from the world of the dead. Just as the living cannot become more alive, the dead cannot be killed. Nice. Can't kill without we dead? The only thing you, could, you can possibly destroy is a cursed sentiment. So, what does that mean? It is as I told you before. Death and life existing together. If that is the origin of the mark, then a way to erase it will be there. By driving away the spirit, the curse will also be eliminated. So, so defeating Hanahiko is how we'll be able to destroy the mark. Setting aside how he can't be killed, what exactly is the key then? It is nothing more than a concept, so I am unsure. I'm unsure? I'm certain of one thing. Fate ties the spirit to its place of birth. An object there may, may be able to fulfill the role of the key. It is a difficult concept to grasp, but that is just how spirits are. Determining the nature of the key, that will decide your fate. <clears throat> I had a feeling we'll just have to keep digging around at, at H Elementary. We don't know what the cursed sentiments or the key is when the grudge are. Getting the key and lifting the grudge is the only way to survive. You will be required to be to make use of the spirit's fear. This way, 
the, the way to repel the spirit lies within its grudge. Remember this and be careful. And if it was at the spirit house, we could go room. <laughs> oh my god, finally. Let me say it real quick. <clears throat> Alright, and my throat is like not okay right now. So that'll be it for today. <laughs> Just see you next time then. See ya.